Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So I wanted to say thank you for getting me to that 15,000 subscriber count. You guys, you're so wonderful and I am so blessed to have each and every one of you in my life on my channel. And I wanted to say thank you for letting me have a few days off. It was my son's birthday yesterday and we had a really wonderful celebration. And yeah, so I just wanted, I needed to take a couple days. So thank you guys. All right, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to get on with the story. Okay, hi Leslie. Every time someone apologizes for how long their story is, you always say that you're fine with it, but I still feel that I need to apologize. Feel free to edit as much as you like, or if you even decide to use it at all. Thank you for creating your channel and for sharing your gift of storytelling. Like everyone else says, you have a great voice for it and a warmth that really comes through. Like a lot of other listeners, I have had experiences that I had forgotten about and or never recognized as having anything to do with Sasquatch until years later, thanks to listening to channels like yours. I think you are providing a real service. I am also grateful that you are the unusual person who makes space for the more spiritual Sasquatch stuff. I think that researchers who dismiss the spiritual are missing out on information that would fill in some holes. Fred Beck, survivor of the famous Ape Canyon attack of 1924, offered an interesting analysis in his book, I Survived the Ape Man of Mount St. Helens, that is informed by his apparent spiritual training and skill as a medium or clairvoyant as he describes himself. This is how my conscious Sasquatch journey started, although I now think it actually started much earlier, but that's for another day. It was around 2016 when I began watching the various Sasquatch shows. Drawn in by their commercials that always seemed to promise that they had new evidence, I have always been into the woo-woo things, but I wasn't born in time to be part of the Bigfoot craze. My connection was a book my aunt had on her bookshelf that I would browse through when I visited her, and I had Bigfoot characters incorporated into a comic strip I used to draw as a kid. Anyway, something that I saw on one of the shows must have inspired me to do a YouTube search. And YouTube had recommended Sasquatch videos to me ever since. I attended a spiritualist seminary some years before 2016. And one of the requirements I had to meet before becoming a minister was to create a development circle. Spiritualism seeks to prove that consciousness exists beyond death and development circles are in service to developing mediums. The spiritualist church isn't concerned with people joining their religion so much as they are demonstrating that spirits exist and can communicate, providing detailed evidence that they are whom they claim to be. Thus, these development circles tend to be work-intensive and press participants to really get detailed information from the spirits that they perceive. My circle was a good one and ran for years even after I, I was ordained. By 2016, the circle was almost 10 years old and the original students served as mentors to newer ones. Memberships grew and even though we typically only had about 25 members participate in a given circle, with only about 15 true regulars, the official amount of members passed 100. I kept everyone abreast of meetings and topics to be discussed, and people would drop in depending on interests. 
The result was that it was never the same exact group for any given circle. That year, I began to experience a strange skunk-like smell that seemed to come from out of nowhere. It seemed more like a spirit signature, something a spirit might use to make its presence known, than a physical smell, because often I was the only one who smelled it, despite how intense it was. Other times, people shared in their experience, and usually it was someone who would be considered psychic or, at the very least, spiritual. Even members of the development circle spoke to me privately about experiencing the skunky smell without my even mentioning that it was also happening to me, making me that much more convinced that it was a spiritual phenomenon. I did research online and I found a group called the Fairy and Human Relations Congress that holds an annual summer event dedicated to, yes, building a relationship with the fairies. Their keynote speaker that year was a medium who had been having a skunk smell experience and was told by a Native American medicine man that it was a Sasquatch visiting her in spiritual or astral form. The Congress saw the Sasquatch material as overlapping with fairy material and thus had invited this medium to speak. I was really struck by this because I had been watching the Bigfoot programs and YouTube videos and doing so had become a regular habit. I began to think that this was being spiritually driven or Sasquatch driven. I decided to pull the hundred or so members of the development circle email list to see if they were aware of the skunk smell. Of about a hundred members, I believe roughly 40 responded to say that they were, with stories like what I had been experiencing, the smell appearing in places where no skunk would be, and in situations where they seemed to be the only ones detecting it. One member on the list, a practicing shaman, responded to me privately and shared some interesting information. I am based in New York City, and this shaman was in Seattle, Washington, at the time, attending a gathering of shaman types, where the skunk smell phenomenon was the talk of the event. Something that he learned that was new for me as well was that so many cultures around the planet had their own monkey man myths, and that year, 2016, was said to be the year of the Hanuman, the Hindu monkey god and king of the monkey people, a magical race charged with the protection of the planet. It was believed that during his year, Hanuman and the monkey people were making their presence known to spiritual people in preparation for an eventual big reveal. The monkey people being charged with protecting the earth seemed to most of the shamans to infer that the monkey people want to help humanity to reconnect with nature and perhaps undo the damage that we have caused. My decision to attend a spiritualist seminary was a step on a lifelong spiritual journey. My childhood was not unlike Fred Beck's and suffice to say that, like him, I have been set up to be unusually comfortable with the woo-woo. An aunt with the Bigfoot book married to a family when I was nine, and she recognized that I had spiritual gifts. She was an Irish witch, intrigued me in the pre-Christian indigenous beliefs of the Irish people, which included beliefs and spirits. I was taught that the old gods of Ireland were the Tuatha de Danann, the children of the forest. They are described, for all intents and purposes, as red-headed superhuman or giants. Their enemies were also giant, beast-like men called Formorians, who could step in and out of reality, often fighting half in and half out, leaving single giant footprint tracks 
that only went so far before disappearing. Sound familiar? And although they were never described as monkey-like, I can't imagine that the ancient Irish people would ever have seen monkeys to make that connection. Having been trained to see and connect with spirits from my aunt and then through other training right up to the seminary, I have been exposed to an array of spirit forms. Only around this time did I ever see a giant, incredible, hulk-shaped entity that looked like it was compromised of wavy energy, looking like heat on asphalt in the summer. In addition to the weird shape and visual effects, once acknowledged, this being would walk away as opposed to just disappear. Eventually, I began receiving recommendations from YouTube to watch Bigfoot videos that showed them being a cloaking or predator effect to be almost invisible, just like I was observing. I had been studying shamanism for a few years by 2016 through both the Harner Foundation for Shamanic Studies and privately with a protege of Michael Harner, and underwent a shamanic illness that is said to officially turn one into a shaman. Witchcraft has a similar belief about getting a life-threatening infection that activates your witch blood. Shamanism and witchcraft both acknowledge that you get a spirit ally or teacher after this event. And I did. I thought she was a very ancient Aboriginal or Neanderthal woman who was kind of rough in the way she related to me, like zapping me with what feels like an electric zap to get my attention. However, she did give me a lot of instruction about herbs and precious stones and their uses that lined up with lore I had explored later. Eventually, she would bring some younger males who looked more obviously to be Sasquatches and smelled, which she did not, and I was inspired to reach out to Kelly Lapsaritis after seeing one of her videos. She and her husband are very big in the spiritual Sasquatch community, and she was able to corroborate a lot of what I was experiencing without my giving her any information first. She validated that the female was an elder Sasquatch who was attracted to working with me due to my spiritual path work and love for the earth. The younger males were being brought around as sort of an education into how humans aren't all bad. Nanit, as Kelly Lapsaritis identified her, also gives me some explanation about Sasquatch, their behavior, and known features that sounded fairly scientific, that I can share sometime. I feel differently than Fred Beck, who saw the Sasquatch as lower beings, and Kelly Lapsaritis and the spiritual Sasquatch people who see them as higher. I experience them as co-walkers on the earth, and they can vary in character or spiritual levels just like humans. I have heard that Native Americans describe them as neither good nor bad, which sounds about right. They seem to be able to do psychic things that humans can't, at least don't anymore, unless they make a special effort, but they don't affect me the way that higher or holy beings do. A higher being has energy that feels amazing and has detectable effect like making you actually vibrate and feel blessed in their presence. The Sasquatch just feel like folks, and the words I use to describe them are more like natural, real, and authentic, more than holy. Like other beings in nature, they will harm and kill if they feel necessary, and maybe even eat someone if they're hungry. Larger primates eat smaller ones in the natural world all the time. I have more stories, but this has been plenty long, so I will end it here, Leslie. I am, again, so grateful for your channel and am here for you if you run low on stories. As I mentioned, 
I was having Sasquatch experiences, not to mention experiences with spirits and other fairies, long before I understood what was happening and have had plenty of things happen since 2016. Not sure whether this makes me even more unusual, but just to add, one, I am a psychotherapist, a profession probably not highly represented among folks immersed in this material. And two, I, again, live in New York City, and only two of my live encounters with Sasquatch people were outside of the city proper. I live on Staten Island, which is more forested than the rest of the city, and close enough to the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, where Sasquatch is known to roam. There have been recorded sightings here on Staten Island going back to the 1970s, where they refer to them as Trasquatch because they are usually observed digging through people's trash looking for food. Take care, and please keep doing what you're doing. And that signed Brian McSee from New York City. That was amazing. Um, of course, I've been hearing tidbits of this stuff for a long time now. I can recall the look on my son's face. He would just look at me and shake his head like, seriously, mom? But honestly, I believe there's something pretty special about these creatures. Um... Like it says, they're good and they're bad, just like us. Anyways, guys, I've kept you long enough, I think. I'm sorry it took me so long to uh, get another video up and running, but sometimes things happen. Please, guys, take care of each other, be kind to each other, love each other, and don't forget, love yourself, because you certainly deserve it. Okay, guys. I'll see you back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.